over the course of the over the next uh, period of time, um, the presentation will probably last between 20 and 25 minutes, and then we'd be more than happy to take on any questions you may have. Please also feel free to use the chat to ask any questions in real time, and I'd be happy to answer them if I can. Uh, but what I hope to do is introduce you to a new tool developed by ID Insight to help organizations understand where they sit in their data readiness journey. So I'd like to take you to what might be an average Monday morning for the leader of a small or medium social enterprise or nonprofit. Just imagine you're waking up, you're opening your emails and you're thinking about, okay, what do I have this week? What is going to be taking up a lot of my time? And what are the important decisions that I have to make? Well, there is this large grant proposal that I would like the team to uh, complete but it's requesting some information on the impact of our program. What is the effect size of our program? On Thursday afternoon, there's a board meeting and I would like to share some indicators of the success of our program, some key performance indicators. I have a meeting upcoming with the chief operating officer and uh, she is asking me about how many team members we might want to hire for monitoring and evaluation roles. The chief strategic officer is working on developing the five-year plan for the organization and is asking about what role do we feel like data plays in the upcoming strategy. And I've just opened my emails and I see that our research lead has shared a couple of articles uh, with new academic research, which is relevant to our program. Now, these are the types of questions which leaders in small and medium social organizations face on a daily, if not weekly basis. And it raises the question of how can an organization determine where to focus their limited resources in order to get the best bang for the buck, in order to be able to answer those key learning questions that will amplify the impact of an organization. And what I'd like to discuss with you today is a tool that we believe can help an organization answer exactly that question. It's what we're calling the Monitoring and Evaluation Health Check, M&E Health Check. And it's an online survey that seeks to capture granular information on an organization's existing capacity to leverage data and evidence to amplify impact. And I'll share the uh, website details with you in a moment. One thing I'd also like to highlight is that on top of just being a survey, what it provides is a set of targeted recommendations that an organization can use to prioritize their limited resources. It provides a system of uh, levels across various modules that provide a deep insight into an organization's current capacity and opportunities to really level up in a cost-effective and time-effective manner. Just by way of introduction, ID Insight is an organization that uses data and evidence to help leaders combat poverty worldwide. So at the core of our mission is a belief in the power of data and evidence to really amplify impacts of various leaders. Now, we work with a wide range of leaders in the social space. We work with governments all across the world. We work with large and small foundations and philanthropies. And we also work with a number of small and medium social enterprises and nonprofits. And it is that last group that we really are focusing this monitoring and evaluation health check towards. Now, there's a common question that is raised or an axiom that sits underneath all of this work. And it really is the question of how does data really amplify impact? At our core, we believe that knowledge is power and data is a core element in building that knowledge. But what I'd like to walk you through is three quick examples of organizations that show the power of using data to drive better decisions and thereby amplify impact. The first organization is Educate Girls. And Educate Girls is a nonprofit based in India that seeks to get out of school girls into school by using frontline workers who go into these communities and identify the out of school girls themselves and work directly with them and their families. Now, one example 
of data being used to amplify impact is the use of data science or prediction modeling to identify communities that may have a relatively larger number of out of school girls in their communities and thereby allow educated girls to focus on those uh, high priority communities and get a better bang for their buck. In other words, identify a greater number of out of school girls than they otherwise would have and thereby amplify impact. So that's one example. A second example I will highlight is the uh, nonprofit based in Bangladesh called BRAC, uh, one of the largest, if not the largest NGO in the world, at least in terms of number of employees. Now, BRAC has a number of programs. One of them is their health, nutrition, and population program. This program involves frontline health workers going and visiting in person over 80 million beneficiaries across Bangladesh. Now, data and evidence has helped support their impact by, uh, by leveraging real-time data collected through an online system. So BRAC HNPP is now collecting live data from their beneficiaries whenever a frontline worker goes and interacts with them. And senior program leaders are able to get a deep insight into the effectiveness of their program through a real-time dashboard that displays key performance indicators on a daily basis. Without data and evidence, these senior leaders would not be able to understand in depth the effectiveness of their program and diagnose potential issues. But thanks to this real-time dashboard, BRAC is now able to quickly and effectively identify problems and try and optimize solutions for them. And a final example that I'll go through is an organization called Give Directly that provides unconditional cash transfers to those in poverty around the world. Now, Give Directly has leveraged the power of randomized control trials to do two things. Firstly, understand the effectiveness of their program and how to optimize the effectiveness of their program. And secondly, to communicate the effectiveness of their program to donors, to beneficiaries, and to the wider public. This has led to Give Directly delivering more than $500 million in direct cash transfers to over a million people around the world. Now, each of these organizations is an example of uh, a group of people who are leveraging data and evidence to really amplify impact. And they can be almost held as sort of these gold stars in uh, the development space. But for sort of growing small and medium organizations, the question raised is fair to be raised about how do we get to that point? Now, what you can see on the screen at the moment is sort of a ladder of data maturity. Now, the three organizations I've just described will be considered mature organizations. They've sort of built out all of the foundational capacity required to answer the key learning questions with the right tool at the right time. But for smaller organizations, how do you get to that point? Now, what you'll see here is a, is a sort of breakdown of levels of organizations in terms of their maturity. At the lowest level, at level zero, we're looking at very early stage organizations, nascent organizations that may not have a monitoring and evaluation team in place and may not have automated data systems either. As an organization starts hiring folks who are specialists, in data analysis, some monitoring and evaluation, and maybe even data science, they start working their way through the levels. This also includes building m and &E systems, such as theories of change, uh, evidence and literature reviews, needs assessments, process evaluations, and all of these systems work together to provide organizations with deep insights into the effectiveness of their program and how to really leverage uh, their resources to maximize impact. Once an organization gets to a mature stage, we generally observe that the organization has an m and &E team in place. It has a robust set of m and &E systems that are monitoring and evaluating the effectiveness of the program. And an organization is really at a place where they can deploy their team to answer the key questions as they arise. And that might be through a randomized controlled trial, that might be through some type of A-B testing. It could be really a wide range of things, 
But once a team is mature, they're able to be very flexible and dynamic in how they deploy their resources. So if we think that back to these early stage organizations, and what are the really key questions that they will be asking? Firstly, is what is our current capacity? And how does this compare with where we should be, where our competitors or similarly sized organizations are? And this is a very difficult question to answer. There isn't a guidebook which says when an organization gets to 20 people, they should have this many people in their m and &E team, or they should be collecting this type of data. It's really a black box. And so it's very hard to compare and understand where an organization's capacity should really be sitting. A second question, and I raised this a little bit earlier, is how can I deploy my resources effectively? Small and medium-sized enterprises and, and all organizations have limited resources and leaders want to ensure that they're deploying these resources in the most effective way possible. And a third question is, are the resources that I'm deploying actually effective? Are they actually helping my organization get to where I want it to be? Is it amplifying the impact and goals of my organization? Now to each of these three questions, the m and &E Health Check is uh, a great tool. Firstly, it provides a detailed understanding of where your organization sits in terms of those levels I mentioned before. Secondly, it provides targeted recommendations on how to deploy your resources and fill the sort of key gaps in the most cost-effective manner possible. And finally, it's a diagnostic tool. And what that means is it's like a annual health check. It's something you can take over a period of time to understand whether you are building capacity in the areas that you are hoping to build capacity and also ensuring that that capacity is aligned with the strategic objectives of your organization. So I've spoken a lot at this point about this m and &E Health Check. What I shall do now is actually share with you uh, what the, the check actually looks like. So just give me a moment and I'll share my screen. So hopefully at this point, you can actually see the website. And this is the m and &E Health Check. It is an online survey uh, that is targeted towards what we describe as the monitoring and evaluation champion within the organization. This monitoring and evaluation champion could be the m and &E lead. It could be the data science or data analytics lead. For smaller organizations that may not have an m and &E team, it may be the chief operating officer or even the chief executive officer, the CEO as well. Really the person that we recommend or the people that we recommend to take this survey are those who have oversight to the organization's monitoring and evaluation objectives and current status. So what is the tool? There are actually two versions of the health check. There's a light assessment and a full assessment. Both uh, involve completing multiple choice questions. So if I open up the light assessment here, the light assessment consists of approximately 40 multiple choice questions. And we uh, approximate that it will take around 20 minutes to complete. And we piloted the tool with a number of organizations at this point. The full assessment is a similar form, but goes into more detail. It consists of approximately 140 multiple choice questions and takes around one hour to complete. Now, as you can see on the screen, uh, on the first page, we collect just some high level information around the name of the organization and the email of the individual completing the organization. And then we jump into the survey itself. There are 13 different sections and these 13, what we call categories, group up into three modules. And I'll go into a little bit more detail in a moment as to what each of these modules and categories are. Within each category, there is a number of multiple choice questions. For example, does your organization have a theory of change? And then there's a series of responses. Now, there are links for questions to reference material. Should an organization not have a clear understanding of what is being asked? However, from piloting, we have observed that most, if not all organizations are able to complete the survey without having to resort to a lot of the guidance material. The tool has been designed in such a way as to try and minimize the level of jargon and make it simple for organizations to complete. 
I'll just jump to another page so you can have a look at some of the other types of questions. So this uh, section is focused on uh, mission alignment and strategy and looking at m and &E systems. So does your organization continue, uh, routinely collect performance data, for example? Does the organization systematically report findings from monitoring and evaluation to decision makers? So this is a quick walkthrough and there are 13 pages like this. Each consists of about three to five questions on the light assessment and about 10 to 12 questions for the full assessment. So I'll just go back to the presentation if you just give me a moment. So the tool has been developed uh, by uh, both internal expertise at ID Insight and the monitoring and evaluation work that we do, but also building on best pace, uh, the best practice literature in the space. So we've built on uh, UN materials, World Bank materials, existing capacity assessment tools to really understand what are the core competencies that are required for an organization to be considered a mature organization in terms of M&E systems. So you've gone through the survey, you've jumped on the website, you've completed either the light or the full assessment. What's next? What do you get after spending the time? So organizations will receive a report. And there's two parts to the report. There's an overview, which uh, sets out the level that the organization is at, either between level zero and level three, as I mentioned before, both overall and for each and every module and category. So it gets into quite granular detail. And then as a reminder, there are 13 categories across three modules. On top of just the level, there is a description of the, uh, the capacity of the organization within that category. And then we also highlight three targeted recommendations for an organization. Now these targeted recommendations link to publicly available, publicly available materials that the organization can use to build its capacity in certain areas. What we seek to do is identify those specific areas in an organization's m and &E development journey where quick cost-effective uh, implementation or interventions would be most useful and then provide specific resources to develop those skills. So that's what an organization gets uh, upon completion of the survey, a report, which provides both levels and targeted recommendations. So as I mentioned before, there are three modules within the tool. The first module looks at the mission alignment and strategy of the organization. There are two categories within this module. Firstly, performance framework. So thinking through whether there is a clear theory of change, which links to the vision and strategic priorities of the organization. And secondly, at a high level, what are the existing data collection and data use characteristics of an organization? How do they align to the strategic decision-making objectives of a company? The second module looks at the people, a human resource assessment. When I say people, there are four categories within this module. Firstly, we look at the overall composition of the m and &E team what roles and responsibilities, what existing work experience and skills do the team members have. Secondly, we look at the managerial skills of those who are overseeing m and &E activities. Thirdly, we look at the technical competence and the technical skills of key team members. And finally, existing capacity building and training practices within an organization. So these all comprise the human resource assessment module. The final module of this survey is the longest, and it looks at an assessment of the existing monitoring and evaluation systems within an organization. There are seven categories, and these categories somewhat build on each other. The first looks at theory of change. Second is whether an organization has any key performance indicators and how they've been selected. Third is what uh, an analysis of existing data collection systems and practices the organization may have. 
After that, we look at data management systems. So data management systems look at how does an organization go about storing, analyzing, reviewing uh, the data that it holds. This includes metadata, database structures, the connection of various data systems. The next category looks at data analysis. So the practices that the organization has around replicable analysis of data. Then we look at communication, so data dissemination and reporting. How is that analysis of data communicated to key decision makers? And how is it used to make strategic level decisions? And finally, there's a short category around financial resources, essentially looking at uh, whether an organization has sufficient financial resources to build out a mature uh, monitoring and evaluation system. So those are the three modules. So one question you may have is, uh, I understand that there are already a number of capacity assessment tools in the market. And why does the m and Health Check uh, need to exist? What is the comparative advantage or value of this tool over these other tools? And that is a very fair question. Uh, you would be right in noting that there are a wide variety of tools available online to uh, evaluate the capacity of an organization. I've listed a few of these tools on the screen now. There are some UN-based tools. Data.org has their data maturity assessment. Uh, there's the measurement initiative with what they call the MECAT, as well as the Nesta Impact Framework. And also there's JPAL's MESA, a tool that looks at capacity for government systems. Now, we believe that the m and &E Health Check is unique in the marketplace for three reasons. Firstly, this tool is targeted at small and medium-sized organizations in the social space. Now, that's not to say that larger scale organizations can't use the tool. However, what we seek to do is really identify in more granular detail uh, the opportunities for development for smaller organizations that may not yet have a mature m and &E system in place. So the first differentiating factor is the target audience. The second differentiating factor is a level of detail that the tool goes into. So as I noted before, the light version uh, consists of 40 to 50 multiple choice questions and the full version consists of almost 150 multiple choice questions, which is quite an exhaustive tool. However, if you understand that there are 13 categories that we are measuring capacity on, you'll see that we really are going into quite a level of depth. And we hope that this is helpful to organizations that are trying to understand with quite some specific detail how to use their limited resources in the most effective way possible. And the third way in which we believe that this is unique and helpful is the format. So we have designed the tool to be as simple to use as possible. As you would have seen, it's like a simple Google form with multiple choice questions. Uh, many organizations have not had to resort to reviewing guidance materials to complete the tool. Uh, it is really designed to be simple to use for anyone to be able to jump online and complete quite quickly. So for those three reasons, we believe that the m and &E Health Check is something unique in the marketplace and particularly helpful to those small and medium organizations looking to deploy data to really amplify their impact. So where to go from here? You're an organization, a smaller organization, who's completed the tool. You've received the report, which has a set of targeted recommendations and gives you insights into the level at which we're operating. What should you do now? So there are three sort of avenues for next steps that we see. The first is that an organization could take the free publicly available tools that we recommend and work through those and build their capacity. The second opportunity is particularly focused on organizations that may be more towards the nascent or emerging stages. So at ID Insight, we have what we call the monitoring and evaluation design advisory services, essentially a set of services where we assist smaller organizations going from a theory of change all the way through to building an M&E strategy. So that's targeted at organizations that might be more immature in their data readiness journey. 
And for those organizations that are more mature, uh, there is an opportunity to start building out bespoke projects. Essentially identifying those key research questions that are both urgent and important and may require the investment of more significant resources. So this might be things such as machine learning, predictive algorithms. It might be the implementation of a randomized controlled trial. Uh, it might be the development of a dashboard and data engineering system, such as the one that I described for BRAC. So these are more complex programs, which are generally best suited for organizations that are already at the mature stage of their M&E data readiness journey. So with that, if we think back to the leader on a Monday morning who was considering all of these decisions that they need to make, grant proposals, hiring, strategic decisions, upcoming board meetings and key performance indicators, we believe that the m and &E Health Check is a helpful tool that can help your organization unleash the power of data and evidence to amplify your impact. It is a tool that will help you determine where to devote your limited and precious resources or with the goal of maximizing the impact that your organization can make. And with that, I'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, please feel free to either raise your hand or to put those questions directly into chat. And thank you for your time.